Ethiopia's capital, Addis Ababa, offers the visitor an unexpected and vibrant face. Roughly 83% of the more than 2.7 million inhabitants claim to be Christian. Salome went to discover the rapidly growing MKC, the Meserete Christos Church, and how they were impacted by years of persecution. When I've been asked to go to Ethiopia, I really love the idea of going there to film people to hear their stories. I believe in the power of stories, of people sharing what their experiences are, and also from different countries. I come from France, they are from Ethiopia. We have million, almost a million members now, but during persecution, we're, you know, 5,000. What interested me in the churches in Ethiopia was what they went through through persecution time. A communist military regime known as the Derg overthrew Emperor Haile Selassie in 1974, leading to an era of imprisonment and persecution of evangelical church members. Forced underground for a decade, MKC grew from 5,000 to 50,000 devoted members. Those people who came to the Lord during the persecution, those people were really very, very strong people because they came deciding to die or to get into prison or that kind of thing. Any, any security person can put you in prison and you know, torture you in the evening, you know, the whole night. Anticipating persecution, MKC leaders developed a small group infrastructure in preparation for the difficult months and years ahead. At some point we can gather around 10, but usually five, six people were the common. Because we are afraid, maybe the communist government can send spies. Uh, you know, you can't sing loudly. So when we come to the, the group, you can't come even being two. We just come one by one. They baptized people in secret. There was an old bathtub in which over a hundred people got baptized during the Derg regime. Some of our leaders, I think maybe four or five people, you know, went to Russia. They were searching for the Mennonites in, in Russia to ask how they resist in the underground movement. German Mennonites together with Baptists and other Christians were persecuted over decades in Russia. Approximately 4.5 million people with a German background emigrated from the former Soviet Union to Germany beginning in 1960. Their story is told at a museum in Detmold in Germany. Today, roughly 42,000 of these immigrants worship in Mennonite and Baptist congregations. So there were some books, you know, coming into the country from Russia, like the book called Tortured for Christ, you know, how the Russian Christians suffered. So we drove an hour away from Addis Abeba to meet Aster, an elderly woman, and meeting her was very encouraging to me because just the way she shared her stories about being imprisoned and about passing out Bibles to the prisoners and um, as well as just standing very firm in what she believes in. We were sitting in the prayer room, surrounded by 200 people with guns. They said, we will kill you. And I said, no, you cannot kill me because Jesus is Lord. She has such a uh, boldness in the way she would speak to uh, the people who would persecute her. Um, and I actually asked her, like, were you at a certain point afraid? Because when she was talking to me, it didn't feel like she was afraid at all. Uh, she said that she was, but it didn't change um, the way she believed in God. One day, I scooped up sand with my hands. I prayed to God that the number of Christians and churches would be as many as the grains of sand in my hands. God answered my prayer. Today there are more Christians than I can count. As with the MKC, freedom of speech and worship came at a price. Colleagues of reformer Ulrich Zwingli in Zurich refused to baptize children. They felt baptism should result from adult choice and commitment to follow Jesus. They became known as Anabaptists, introducing and practicing 
adult baptism. Persecution started soon after. Felix Mons was the first Anabaptist to be drowned in the river in Zurich. For MKC, the newly established freedoms at the end of the Derg regime allowed them to once again gather openly for worship. Going to different Mennonite churches in France or going to Ethiopia, I just see this community aspect that I don't see anywhere else. According to Colossians, we teach and preach and also rebuke that our members to become mature and come into the likeness of his son, Christ. They just put the accent on, on community and, and learning from each other and teaching each other and encouraging each other. And as well as like prayer time, they do it alone, I'm sure, but they do put an emphasis on praying together and really standing together in faith. A mature Christian is a person that prays regularly and MKC has been encouraged its members um, to have a, a prayer life. The young generation are benefiting from this, from all the people that have prayed so much for the church. And, and it's a reason why the Miserite Christian Church has grown so much. It's because of prayer and prayers from the generation who went through persecution and learned how to pray. The highest level of Christian maturity is growing to the likeness of Christ. Christian maturity can be determined by the knowledge of the Word of God we have and uh, the determination we, uh, we have to live towards that uh, Word of God. When you serve and serve, the maturity comes. But if somebody is always sitting in the church and just absorb, you know, you know, I don't think there will be any maturity. The leaders of the Miserite Christian Church empowered the younger generation to not run the church, but give the ideas so that it, it grows. And I think it's this empowerment that they have given to the young generation that is helping today the church to grow because they are the one who are going to lead the church. Huge population is the young population. So they are the one who are taking responsibility to do so many kind of ministry in worship, in music, and they are, they are very active in church ministry. I want to write a song that pleases God and humans as well. Uh, the youngsters, they use almost every kinds of instruments uh, available and uh, uh, this helps to keep them in the church and also for evangelizing uh, the young groups outside the church. The music today has significantly moved from where it was, at least I think so, in terms of how powerful it is to attract young people. Leaders have been quite helpful in terms of not being narrow and in terms of letting young people explore music to get to the message that they want. Because we have learned and heard about these stories, why can we not like learn from that and be encouraged from that and not wait for persecution, but actually act today and pray with the same faith that Aster had for that kind of thing to happen, for churches to grow and for young people to step up. Tasting the amazing Ethiopian coffee I was like, wow, that is the best coffee I've ever had. Um, and I found out that it was their nice. birthplace of coffee. I went to a coffee shop in Addis Ababa and right behind the corner they were roasting the coffee, sorting it out and grinding it before brewing it to serve it. The whole process of making coffee takes time and there's different stages of like from the beans that is green to the coffee bean that's being roasted to the coffee bean that's being uh, grounded to finally be beautiful coffee and I think sometimes as Christian we are staying in that stage of like this green bean that don't have any flavors that don't have any smell and aroma but we can go further by being grounded to be able to bear more fruits and be useful to serve God and for that you need to be many 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 beans and I think that's beautiful thing about community and the beautiful thing about 
church is that we get to do that together if we have the desire to let ourselves be grounded.